Hello and welcome to this MGL2 video. Now, if you're here, you most likely um, come from our Discord, but if you're not from our Discord, let me just explain what this video is about. So, first, I have to explain that this video is particularly geared towards Metal Gear Online 2 players on RPCS 3. Um, and what the video is about is how to use DS4 Windows and RPCS 3 for. Um, for when using the DualSense controller or DualShock 4 controller. And you might be wondering, Darman, why have you made this video? Because RPCS3 supports the, um, these handlers already. And the reason for that is because we've had lots of player feedback. It's a very competitive game. Um, and I actually agree with this opinion. Uh, first I thought maybe, or maybe it's placebo, but I've been doing the same thing before this feedback came. And I, and I was doing it, I didn't know why I was doing it. Um, I just didn't like the hand, the handler that came with RPCS3. And it must be to do with something to do with the latency or the calibration of um, RPCS3's handler. Or oh, we're all placeboed, but I rarely hear anyone say the handler is better on RPCS3 than DS4 Windows. Anyway, without further ado, let's just get into how you do this. So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna click this link in the description of the video. Um, and then once you're here, you'll be greeted with Ryochan 7's um, releases for DL DS4 Windows. As you can see, there's multiple releases here. Obviously, you're going to want the latest one. Now, every time he releases, he makes um, post release on, on this GitHub, he also gives you the prerequisite .NET Runtime X64. We'll need that. So we're going to download the 64-bit version. Um, that everyone should be on 64 bit. If you're not, I'll be very surprised um, when following this tutorial. Um, so I've now gone in my downloads folder. I clicked it on Firefox, but it depends what your web browser is, but you'd go in your downloads folder, get this download, install. As you can see, it downloaded automatically in my case. So there wasn't much thought put into it. You can close that now. Then you'll go back to um, this release page. And then here you can see all the um, files that come with it. Ignore the source code. You want the x64.zip file. Um, unless if you've got 7-zip, then you'll probably prefer this top one. Anyway, it doesn't really matter for the install process. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to drag this to my desktop. And I'm going to right click and then I'm going to... Um, in fact, no, I'm going to open this and then I'm going to drag this onto my desktop. Once you've done that, open the folder. And as you can see, we've got a beautiful, beautiful DS4 Windows application there. We're gonna open that. Uh, if firewall comes up, just press run anyway. It's a highly trustworthy application. Loads of people use it. Um, and then you've got two options of your install. You've got program fo folder, which is known as a portable install where everything you um, install in relation to DS4 Windows will go in this folder that you've put here. And you've got updates, which is more traditional, like like these games, for example, they go into your program data files in the, in the C drive. I mean, technically all this is in the C drive, but you go to a specific location where other programs tend to be installed. But I like to see where everything's installed. So I'm going to go with program folder. And then you should be greeted with um, stuff to install. So we're just going to follow this. So step one, install this. Now, we don't support Windows um, 7 and MGO 2 so you get ignored if you have Windows 7, unfortunately. This ain't the video for you. Um, it's weird. They don't even have a step 3. That's Oh, okay, they do. I just found that interesting. I highly recommend you um, do step 4 here and install this. Agree. Install. I'm going to press no to the restart for now. Um, obviously, it's good practice to restart once you've installed stuff like this. Um, this, I don't necessarily recommend, but I like to install any, everything anyway. I doubt you'll use it, though, based on what it is. Accept, install, finish. And then I'm just going to click finished. So we're we ready to go. I'm just going to... There we go. Um, now, um, you'll plug in your controller and depending on the default settings of the release, it's changed it. It used to be that you plug in your controller like this. I'll just plug in your controller and it would work. And 
or you'd press start and it would work. But not the case anymore. So I'm going to stop that now. What you have to do is you have to go to settings. You have to go to device options. And then you have to click which controls you want. You can see it supports quite a lot. I'm going to click dual sense. I'm not going to enable this um, log because I don't think I'll need, be needing that. Um, it might ruin the performance, so don't do that. Not that I know that as facts, but you just don't need it because it's for developers or people that want to track what's going on. So now I'm going to click start. As you can see, my control has now been picked up. And that's all there is to it, honestly. Um, if you had an issue where it didn't ask you about driver installation, you go to the settings page here. Then you go to controller slash driver setup. And as you can see, you can reinstall things. You can uninstall things. It's really user friendly in that sense. Um, by doing that, it's actually stopped my application. Now, if you want to edit anything, you can click edit here. Here you've got, you see all these options. Um, I like to, one thing I recommend is if you put this to pass through. That means that your touchpad won't be um, used as a mouse because when it's a mouse, I find it a bit annoying if I accidentally click on the touchpad um, in some games, but it's up to you. Um, and you can see, you can choose how it emulates, but I prefer Xbox 360 um, because I want to use X input when I go into the emulator. So let's go into the emulator now. We okay. So when you go to the emulator, it's super simple. You just go to pads, you go to X input, and well, let me show you. So you'd click X input. Um, I've already had it selected. I've got settings I want for MGO2 particularly. You may want to set 1.25 here and whatever you want your right stick as. But you've also got options in DS4 Windows, which is nice. Um, and that pretty much covers the video, really. That's how you install DS4 Windows and um, for RPCS3. Um, see you guys next time, and I hope this video helps someone.